ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله in the name of god the most gracious the most merciful there is a concept in education for people who are learning how to teach and learning how to educate and pass knowledge along that one of the easiest ways to give a person a lesson and make that lesson last with them is by putting it into a story and that's why we see with many lessons that kids learn as they're growing up those lessons are in the stories that they are hearing and they're listening to and our quran is blessed and it has many stories all over and those stories are a way for us to learn and implement those lessons we have stories about our prophets stories about people and stories about communities and today i bring to you a story in surah al-baqarah about a community this community was a community that was oppressed and they had no way for them to end their oppression so they went to their prophet and they told him we need to stop this oppression that we're dealing with their oppression was that they were facing a force of tyrants led by a man named Jalut or as translated in English Goliath and they were being oppressed by this force and that the only way they would be able to stop their oppression was if they were given a leader who would lead them to end their oppression and confront their oppressors so they went to their prophet and they said oh prophet we need a leader we need a king and the prophet asked them but if i bring you someone how do i know you will not turn him away so they told their prophet why would we turn him away when we are dealing with all this oppression when we need to be saved so their prophet said okay but if i bring someone for you if i bring someone for you you must follow him so the prophet came to them with a man named Talut. Talut was a man who was physically able, a man who was able to lead them. He was the tallest of his community, he was the strongest, and he had the most military experience. So he brings them Talut and he says, Talut is here to lead you. But they refuse. They say, how can we follow Talut? when he is not of the wealthy when he is someone who is not economically better than us to lead us and this was a problem and a problem that many people still have where we assume that just because someone has economic success that they are more right to lead than someone who has the ability to lead now Talut was not rich but Talut was the leader they needed. So the Prophet told them that Talut had a sign that would prove to them that he should be the leader. Now the people of Jalut, in their oppression of this community, what they did was they stole some of their religious relics. Now the community we're talking about is a community that came after Musa. People who followed the tradition of Musa. And they had relics from Prophet Musa and Prophet Harun. And these relics were stolen from them by the people of Jalut. So the sign was for them to follow Talut that he would have those relics. And by the miracle of Allah, those relics were with Talut. And it took some time, but the people of that community eventually accepted Talut. They followed him. But there was still resistance. 
The surah goes on and it talks about how Talut finally was able to take his men and uh, gather a group of people from the community to go and confront their oppressors. Now Talut knows his people. He knows what their problems are. And he knows what they need to do to be able to be successful against their oppressors. So in their trip, on their way to confront their oppressors, they're traveling a long way and they don't have much water. So these people are thirsty. As they're on their way, they pass by a river. And Talut camps there for the night and he tells his men that if you are to touch this river and drink from this river, you can no longer stay with my, uh, my group and you can no longer stay with my army. Unless when you drink from the water, you use your hand. Unfortunately, not many people in his army were able to do that. And throughout the night, more and more people fell to their desires and they were not able to follow, follow Talut's message. Anyone who didn't follow his message was asked to leave. And they left. So now a small army became an even smaller army. This army goes out and they finally reach the area where they're meant to confront their oppressors. And they see Jalut and his army standing there. And they see men over men. How many people were there and they were scared. They were scared. They look at the army and they say, how can we fight that? The ayah says, that the people of Talut's army, when they saw their army, they said, لا طاقة لنا اليوم بجالوت وجنوده. That there is no way we'll be able to fight Jalut and his people today. And from them, an even smaller group saw the situation, saw how their companions were acting, and they had peace in their heart. The next ayah says, قَالَ الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا اللَّهِ كَمْ مِنْ فِئَةٍ قَلِيلَةٍ غَلَبَتْ فِئَةً كَثِيرَةً بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ People who in their hearts believed that they would one day see Allah and have to address Him with what they have done in their lives. They said, how many times has a small group been able to defeat a bigger group through the will of Allah? Through the will of Allah. And indeed, Allah is with the patient. These people are your classic underdog story. Where we see the little guy is always going up against the big guy. In this story is actually where we hear this term come from, the term of underdog, where these people weren't supposed to win. On paper, they're not supposed to win. When Talut hears the words of his people, he decides to give them an incentive, to encourage them to work harder. Talut says, whoever is able to take down Jalut will be the leader after me. Now the men are scared. They see Jalut, Goliath, a man who is huge. A man who is so big that no one else on the battlefield compares to him. And a man who is so skilled that people just by hearing his name are scared. Out of the group with Talut comes out a young man. A man who is younger than most of us in this room. And he says, I will take out Jalut. I will confront Jalut. And the people look at him, they're like, but you're just a young man. You're the smallest out of us. And Talut says, if you're able to do it, do it. And then the battle starts, and Talut's army goes to confront their oppressors. And Dawood, the young man, is able to defeat Jalut. 
he's able to take him <coughs> he's able to take him down and through that they are able to be successful in their confrontation of their oppressor and they're able to end their oppression the smallest man in a small army was able to to confront and take out the leader and the largest man in the other army and it goes back to the ayah where it says kam min fi'atin qalila ghalabat fi'atan kathiratan bi'idhnillah how many times has a small group been able to defeat a larger group through the will of allah indeed allah is with the patient and with that i end the first part of my uh, my khutbah aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum bismillah walhamdulillah was salatu was salam ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so as i said in this story there were specific lessons we were supposed to take out of it the first lesson is courage we saw in the beginning of the story that the community was tired of their oppression they were tired of what was happening so they looked inside themselves and they found the courage to go to their prophet and ask for a way out and ask for help and that help was given to them the second lesson was discipline when talut took his troops out and he took them after they were thirsty and he told them to be modest in the way that they drank water not many listened but he understood that if they were to be successful in their endeavor that they must have discipline they must be willing to listen to the leader to the one who knows better and through that he was able to bring out the best of men that he had and the last lesson in this beautiful story is to always have trust in allah when the people out of the group the small uh, the small part of the group who said kam min fi'atin qalilatin ghalabat fi'atan kathiratan bi'idhnillah how many times has a small group been able to defeat a larger group those people did not do it just because they thought they were a better army that they were more skilled they did it because they knew that the person behind them was the most powerful they knew that allah would help them in their work and they knew that if one day they are to see allah and they had complete sincerity and certainty that they would see allah one day they wanted to see allah saying that they tried their best that they did what they needed to do and they wanted to say to allah that they helped and their oppression these people put their trust into allah and they were able to be successful and we know from after that dawood the young man the youngest and the smallest in the army the one who defeated jalut eventually became a prophet and a leader to his people all through this one story we see the power of courage discipline and putting your trust into allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now we think nowadays all of us have our own problems that we're dealing with we all have our own personal problems whether they be ourselves personally or they be community problems that we're dealing with whether it's muslim communities who are being oppressed abroad or oppressed here in america whether they're problems that we deal on our own or that our communities deal with we all have those problems but for us to solve those problems we must be willing to take the steps necessary to end those problems this community 
is a clear example of what happens when you understand your problem and you understand you need to fix it. There is a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where a Bedouin man came up to him and he said, should I tie my camel or should I trust in Allah? And the Prophet responded to him, tie your camel and trust in Allah. What this means is that you need to do your part so that Allah will help you. Allah will come to the aid of those who need it as long as they are willing to do their part. And this community did their part. And we see from their story, for us to do our parts, we must have courage, we must have discipline, and we must trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nowadays, we see problems all over. There's an organization tomorrow, American Muslims for Palestine, that's hosting an event. American Muslims for Palestine is a national organization that works to educate and advocate for the Palestinian cause here in America. This is a group who is doing the steps necessary. And tomorrow, inshallah, they have an event and tickets are being sold in the office with Dr. Mark Lamont Hill, a man who was fired from CNN for speaking up for Palestine, and Nelson Mandela's grandson, Chief Mandela. So this is a great event, and I encourage you all to do your part to help the Palestinian cause by attending this event, inshallah. You know, as we hear this story, we think about how in American culture, we're always hearing the term David and Goliath. David and Goliath, Dawood and Jalut. We, of course, are not a majority in any sense of the term. But at the end of the day, if we put our trust in Allah, we'll be able to defeat any problems that we have no matter where they are. As long as we are willing to have courage discipline and trust in Allah and it brings us back to the beautiful ayah قال الذين يظنون أنهم ملاقوا ربهم كم من فئة قليلة غلبت فئة كثيرة بإذن الله والله مع الصابرين I ask you all to do your part and no matter what your problem is or the oppression you choose to deal with that you do your part with courage with discipline and trust in Allah. I ask Allah to make us of those who hear these stories and implement them into our lives. I ask Allah to make us of the courageous, of those who are disciplined, and of those who have trust in Allah no matter what their problems are. We ask Allah to make us of those with patience, to make us of Ahl al-Sabirin, to make us of those who understand our role and choose to implement it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are able to pray in a free Masjid al-Aqsa, in a free Palestine, bi-idhnillah. We ask Allah to bless our communities and end our oppression no matter where it is. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those with patience, courage, discipline, and trust in Allah. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة